in hopes that um, this being hands-on is a little more useful um, than just seeing what I do. All right. So I am a um, newbie to this platform as well, but I'm playing with what it can do for me. All right. And I'm going to quickly pause the way I share. I hate sharing my whole screen just because So this is their intro video, just to get a sense of what it does. Um, definitely think in your brain about- um, Welcome to Formative. What it does differently than your pod, if you're experienced with that. If you're not, you don't need to, to understand this. Here's a quick introduction to Formative. Formative is a site that allows you to quickly and easily create formative assessments and assignments for your classes. For any formative, you can add many different question types, as well as add different types of content. You can even upload your own resources and add questions on top, as well as searching for existing questions in our library of thousands of formatives uploaded by other educators. For most questions that you add to a formative, you can set an answer key, which allows for auto grading, saving you time. You also have options like allowing for partial credit and randomizing the order to discourage cheating. You can also tag questions to standards, which allows you to track student progress over time. Once your students start to respond, their responses will appear in your view responses screen. This updates in real time so as soon as your students start to answer, you will see answers appearing here. They'll also be color coded if the questions have been set up for auto grading. You can click on any question to read and you can grade right from this screen. You can type feedback for a student and even use emojis, audio, images, video, or even latex math. Students can send messages to you as well. If you click into a question, then you can view multiple responses at once, and you can even grade more than one response at the same time, again, saving you time, and type feedback from multiple students. It is quick and easy to create a formative. Click plus D formative, and then click the blue plus icon to start adding questions or content to your formative. Type the question you'd like to ask. Add some answer options. Select the correct answers for auto grading. Choose any additional options you'd like to allow and tag your question to a standard. You can also add images, emojis, audio, video, even latex math to any question. And many of our questions will also allow you to do this for answer options. If you've added anything by mistake, you can hit the trash can and you can adjust the default point value for the question by typing and changing it there. From here, you can keep building your formative by clicking on the plus icon again. If you'd like to see how this will appear to students, click on our student preview and toggle to mobile devices, tablets, or laptops. You can even interact with the formative and answer some questions to see how it would be auto graded. If you go to view responses, you can see how the scoring will work. When you're ready to assign, click assign, choose a class that you've set up, and you can choose many different assign options, such as restricting to individual students in a class, scheduling open and close times, showing scores to students, returning correct answers, enabling edits, 
and displaying questions in random order for testing. Once you hit assign, students will be able to start working. There is a lot more to formative for you to explore. Okay, so I'm gonna stop there, um, but that just sort of gives you an overview. Um, but I wanna move on and get a chance to, for us to get our hands on, all right? So what I did is I set up a pilot. Um, let me put this in the chat um, just so you guys can um, give me the correct spelling of everything. Um, but so I set up a pilot so that you guys get a um, premium access to formative for 30 days. Um, so it kind of allows us as a group to play with it. And then we can see sort of what we've tried out. And if you don't play with it after today, that's up to you. Um, but if you can go ahead and go into my slide and just put your first name, last name and email so I can add you to the pilot. Um, and we will get started. Mr. Murphy, I think I already added you yesterday. Thank you. Okay, so check your emails. You should be getting invites. It should be coming through. And go ahead and accept my invite and get yourself signed in. Right, everybody should have an invite by now. And while you're signing up, um, I figured we'd start with sort of like a group work where Mr. Murphy and I have the outlines of our slide for tomorrow, but we wanna add formative assessments throughout. And so I'm gonna go in and sort of show you an initial um, way to add your, can you see my formative screen now? Yeah, you see my formative, okay. So I'm gonna show you how to add your slideshow and then I'm gonna ask for your help and your ideas for where in our slides we could add some things. Won't go through all of it, but you just create new formative, the blue plus sign. And then I'm gonna do the enhance uh, Google doc, okay? So you can build it from scratch, but you can also just pull it in from Google Drive, link your Google account. And I'm 
I'm going to go and I'm going to select this. I think I might have forgotten. So you have a maximum of 25. So let me go and quickly. I'm going to make a copy of just tomorrow's because we just do ours. Um, sorry, I should have done that. We do ours a whole thing. So tomorrow starts at 76. Boom, 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 boom. I did this once and then I didn't like it and then I didn't do it again. Okay. So now if I go back to formative, That just did my first 25, so I gotta do it again, sorry. New formative, blue plus button, repetition. Um, all right, pick from Google Drive, presentations. Now I have my copy that's just those slides. So it's processing, then it's sort of, this is my draft area, so it loads my slides and I'll be able to add things to it shortly. So for example, here's our warm up. What does it mean to be proactive? Normally I would do a Nearpod, collaborate board and have kids put their answers in, but I wanna play with what I can do with formative. So if I click on the slide, I can then add a way to respond. Um, so I, one I'm thinking I could use, I could use audio response. I could use um, short answer, right? One of those two would be good. So I can just click audio response. Um, let me hear your voice. What does proactive mean? And Nadia, it appeared on your screen, you had uh, multiple selected so students can answer in, in multiple ways they can choose how to answer is that what I was seeing going on there um you can I think so and like I said I'm not an expert with formative I'm just playing with sure. it no I was I was just looking yeah. at it and I saw it because it, it this one well I no. see checked uh multiple multiple selection so that means that you can uh choose different ways that student will students will give feedback on the post question I don't know. I can't get this to go away. Um, where do you see the multiple when I go to this? Oh, multiple selection. No, I think that's uh, oh, like, like that multiple, multiple choice. I'm sorry. Okay, great. Yeah. So that would be like, there are two right answers. So what gotcha. in Google forms is called a uh, right? The check boxes. Got it. Um, Thank you. But yeah, I mean, yeah, that would be cool. But you could put multiple, you could put like a one, two, three, and then you could say respond in one way. So you could. Oh, okay, so you, you can have two two or three different mediums or, or vehicles right. that they can answer. Okay. So let's try that. So I have audio response, but then say I wanted short answer too. Wow. Right, so I could do that. So that's a good idea. All right, so we'll do that. So I'll say, choose one of the two ways to respond. Um, and then I can put my little bubble somewhere. And then when we're presenting, I can say, you only have to click on one. And I can label them and things like that. Okay. Um, then we're doing a research activity. So I'm not going to put anything on there. Um, but I do wanna make sure that they heard all my instructions, right? And so maybe not everybody doesn't need to do a, you know, check for understanding on my instructions, but I have one student who's in his IEP, it specifically says, 
I need to be doing a more frequent check for understanding um, than other students. So I don't know if you saw in the video that you can assign certain check, certain formative checks for only specific students, um, right? So I could, um, you know, I could put in a multiple choice and it could be for a specific student for, right, um, you know, what, um, is your goal in this group project, right? And then if that one student doesn't get it, then I know I need to sort of pull him aside or direct chat him or something like that. Um, and then, right, I just have my timer, so I don't want anything there, right? But then there's the share out. Right, so I could put in like um, choose one way to share out for your group, and then I want it to be audio response and text or show your work, right? I could do that. So I can add in lots of things. Um, then here's a more traditional thing if I'm doing like vocab, right? So Mr. Murphy explains all this like heavy vocab from the text, things like that. And then I can, I like that it doesn't take up as much space as Nearbod does, right? Because Nearbod like adds a big slide and then you have to load it. I like that it's just kind of like, click this little button here and it doesn't have to take over my entire PowerPoint. Um, so there are different ways to play with it. Then I'll go and I'll assign and you can sync it to Google Classroom if you want, which is another cool thing that I like. Um, or you can create a whole class, right? But if I go into Google Classroom, which I only have set up through Canvas, so I don't know if I have students that it'll pull in or not. Um, right, assign, and I can post it in my Google Classroom um, if I want to do that. So let me go back to here. So really what I want to do is I want it to be a group think. So I've played with it a little bit. I've showed you sort of how to start. Um, but we as teachers, we all have sort of equal access to being able to explore tools like this. So I wanna give us a little time to just play. Dr. Carlton, how much time do I have left? 10 minutes? Um, I think she may be stopping us about 9.55, I think, okay. but I'm not sure. It looks so, like right now we're at about 9.49. Yeah, so why don't we go and I take maybe three minutes, go in, poke around, and just what's, What's the coolest thing that stands out to you that you're going to try after this? And what's one question that you have? Um, so create your um, formative account, poke around a little bit with tomorrow's lesson in mind. You're not going to have time to actual, actually create it. Um, and then come back and share something with us. I will mute myself and set a timer.
All right, so I want to give us enough time to just share with each other what we discovered, what was frustrating. Obviously, you did not master it in this time. Um, but were there any cool things that you found or questions that you have, things you're going to explore after this? I have found some cool stuff I want to explore. Nadia didn't have quite a chance to, um, but one thing that I got excited to see um, was the, um, the item bank, which is something that Nearpod does not have. And I hate that I have to cut and paste and, and cut and paste and cut and paste when I do you know, time to climbs or other activities where I'm pulling from questions I've already posed. It appears, I haven't tried it out yet, but it appears that it will be able to save all of those questions and I can just click and drag them where I yeah. want them, which is very beneficial. Saves a yeah. lot of time. Yeah. So and, just, and you can do it on the fly. So I, I like that as well. Yeah. The item bank is great because they're also teacher created items. So they're not written by some textbook company, but they're just written by other teachers who have chosen to share them. Which yeah, I saw that and, and it, it broke down by, you know, there's like a, a you know, I guess web wide library and then your personal library as well. So um, that was a nice feature to, I want to explore. Yeah, awesome. Thanks for sharing. Anybody else find something cool that they got excited about? I just love the, the multiple uses for this, not necessarily just content, but also you can even, um, you know, gauge students' um, SEL level, you know, in terms of asking questions about how they feel about their understanding of terms, um, you know, and have them gauge that in a different way than you would normally do it. And I love the fact that there is choice. So you can have multiple ways for them to select. Because um, I think one of the main things I see sometimes when I go to see different teachers' classes is that sometimes students only have one way to respond. Mm -hmm. And them not having a choice on selecting um, what that is kind of closes some of them off from actually responding. So I, I love the inclusiveness and the access. And as well as the format, like you commented about before, definitely much more simpler um, than uh, Neopod in your application of it in the way it's formatted. Yeah, and just to build on that, I was thinking it doesn't even have to be for formative assessments. It could be for summative assessments, right? right. So you just thinking about the options on your test, you could provide audio response possibilities. You could let them draw on a whiteboard to respond to a test question. Um, and it's all right there and it grades it for you too, which is just, super exciting that all of a sudden it's a really simple auto graded way to um, test in multiple modalities. Excellent, yeah, excellent. That the, especially the oral skills sometimes is best um, for some ELL students because uh, some of them are not really good at kind of um, organizing the words and terms properly, but if they can just uh, say what it is, um, they feel a little bit more comfortable. So that, that can help a whole lot in terms of that too. Yeah, and for differentiation, right? Mm -hmm. So like the student I was talking about, you know, we have, you know, a student with severe dyslexia and that is going to be so key for him to be able to respond differently. Yes, and they can use different images if they were, you know, you choose ones with images versus actually just typing text. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm, Kelly. Anybody else want to add something? Okay, well, I hope playing with it a little bit, I, I talked more than I wanted to. Um, I really like just giving people time to play as a group rather than just listen to me. Um, but if you talk to any colleagues and they want to be added to the 30 day pilot, um, I let me know, just tell them to send me an email and I can add them to it. Um, so yes. And then we can also share, we could even come back together at the end of the 30 days and see what each other has done. Um, so if you do keep playing with it, I'll be able to see, and I'll let you know, and maybe we can come back together and, you know, share with the larger group, what we've done. If that's right. exciting to you, let me know. 
Th thank you, Nadia. And I, I had a question, you know, after the 30 days, and you may have said this, I apologize. I was um, uh, on the phone with physical therapy for my daughter uh, in the beginning of your presentation. Um, but, uh, you know, after the 30 days, is the county paying for a uh, You get about half of the figures. So. Okay. So after 30 days, it still does continue, but they just cut down on the what's available to you. Yes, but I believe you can still use what you've created in those first 30 days. Okay. And so you, you, you have found a bunch of stuff, you can use it. Oh, with the, 